the top Cheney, everybody, the top Cheney uh, has endorsed Kamala Harris for president. We talked about Liz Cheney uh, having uh, endorsed Kamala on Thursday. But here we are. Statements issued by President Dick Cheney. Uh, So Liz Cheney accomplished something. This says the tweet that most of us could only dream of convincing our Republican dads to vote for a Democrat. That's one of the lib accounts. It's very proud of this endorsement. So here's a statement from former Vice President Dick Cheney. Former Vice President Dick Cheney issued the following statement regarding the 2024 presidential election. <sighs> In our nation's <laughs> 248 year history, there's never been an individual who's a greater threat to our republic than Donald Trump. He tried to steal the last election using lies and violence to keep himself in power after the voters had rejected him. He can never be trusted with power again. As citizens, we each have a duty to put country above part above partisanship and defend our constitution. That's why I'll be casting my vote for Vice President Kamala Harris. I am altering the deal. Pray I don't alter it any further. Let me give credit to Dick Cheney. He's not a poser in the sense that he made no effort to uh, present himself as any less evil than he was. Never. Like he does not try to present as someone who's good-hearted or means you well. It's just very kind of what you see uh, is what you get. But Kamala's wins was happy about this. Breaking Dick Cheney just announced he'll be voting for Kamala Harris. Wow. Protect Kamala Harris. Their blue check account knew the entire Cheney family is voting for Kamala Harris. Retweet if you stand with the Cheneys against Donald Trump. Woohoo! Uh, all right, let's take a look at this video here. So Dan yeah, yeah, just You said, know, a, a really easy way to take down their arch nemesis, Elon Musk's whole operation, would be to stop using it. Yeah, right. No, no, they won't do that. No, they, they pay for the blue check and everything. That's right. They pay for the blue check, and they didn't even exploit the uh, the larger character limit of that, which is a very concisely put. Wow. So uh, in tribalism and politics, as Dana Bash just said, the Dick Cheney's endorsement for Harris is a better endorsement than RFK Jr.'s endorsement for Trump. No, I'm not kidding. They're now making the man responsible for destroying the Middle East into a hero, and the environmental lawyer who ran his campaign on saving children a Villain. Okay, so I want to hear this because, you know, all of our opinions about RFK aside, it really just does show you the bubble that is the mainstream corporate media for thinking that in the year 2024, Dick Cheney is a more relevant figure than than RFK Jr. But Dana Bash seems to think so. So let's hear this. Endorsements. We don't really know the impact that they have all the time. RFK Jr. hasn't had been in elected office. Dick Cheney was vice president of the United States for eight years. He was a senior member of uh, the House. He was chief of staff to Gerald Ford. He worked tirelessly to advance Republican policies for a long time. You don't think his uh, his endorsement of a Democrat with that kind of pedigree is going to make a difference with no, d- Dana, I really, I, I really don't. <laughs> I, I, never... I love to see the lib. You know how the libs get their talking points from the news. I would like to hear a lib at Thanksgiving, you know, Dick Cheney was chief of staff to Gerald Ford. <laughs> what do you mean his endorsement doesn't matter? Are you aware Dick Cheney was elected vice president? Who's RFK Jr.? Whoever voted for him? I mean, the idea that Dick Cheney is more of the zeitgeist than RFK Jr. is just so transparently absurd. The, I mean, Dick Cheney, the number of people who look back fondly on the Iraq war, you're talking about a single digit percentage of people. You're talking about far fewer than 10% of Americans looking back on that, think that Dick Cheney made a positive impact on the world around him. You're talking about well, almost nobody. I don't know. When it's coming from uh, the Ava Braun of Zionism, Ms. Dana Bash, <laughs> yeah. uh, you have to take it seriously. Um, it's it. I, I saw a lot of Democrats um, making the formulation that Dick Cheney endorsing the Democrat was an indictment of the Republicans without it ever occurring to them that it's actually an indictment of the Democrats. (laughs) Right, of course. That the Democrats have become a place that the fucking Cheneys feel comfortable. Okay, you want to say uh, Donald Trump is so unacceptable. Well, if the Democrats were a legitimately left party, the Cheney's statement, I promise you, would be, we're just not voting. 
Right. We're not, right. or we're writing somebody in. Right. Right. That we're doing a write in campaign. Exactly. Um, we're voting for Dave Chappelle. We hear this podcasters yeah. trying to get him elected. Um, he's with us on trans that, issues. He's with, <laughs> <laughs> we support his stance. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that they feel at home enough in the Democratic Party that uh, they don't feel they're losing any face to support the Democrat, that the policies of the Democratic Party are adjacent enough to their own that they'd rather vote for them than make a statement of not voting, which they could very easily have just put out that statement. Right. Well, it, with Donald Trump running, there's just no one for us to vote for this year. Instead, they endorse the Democrat. What does that tell you about what the Democrats have become? But if if you are brain dead enough to be a Democrat at this point, that they they don't think very. They, these are not deep thinkers. All, yes. all 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 the people who had an IQ above room temperature, um, the the Mueller report was it. That was it. it that now you've just really got the dregs at the bottom of the barrel. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. But to your point that, you know, really it's an indictment of the Democrats that Dick Cheney is supporting the Democrat. You were saying you had some people, you know, on your social media saying, how bad a Republican do you have to be to lose Dick Cheney's support? Well, how bad a Democrat do you have to be to gain Dick Cheney's support? Exactly. exactly. And uh, a perfect encapsulation of that in action are these two tweets. So Emma Viglin says, Dick Cheney trying to rebrand as Captain America democracy lover is hilarious. His ticket stopped the 2000 recount. He helped install puppet regimes in Iraq and Afghanistan. Will of the people in those countries to be damned. He lied to the U.S. public to justify an illegal war. So, I mean, that makes sense, except for the fact, as Anya Perenpil points out, it's not Dick Cheney that's rebranding, sweetie. It's that cult called the Democratic Party that's changed, and you're just along for the ride. Yes, the Democrats yeah. have rebranded. Dick Cheney hasn't rebranded. The Democrats have rebranded. And if you don't believe Anya, take it from Liz Cheney, who was on the Sunday shows uh, this morning making this exact point about Kamala and her convention speech being something that her father would have signed off on, or George W. Bush, or even Ronald Reagan. I have never viewed this as a policy election. Right. Um, but I think that, that it's a very important point. If you look at Vice President Harris's speech, for example, at the Democratic Convention, uh, it is a speech that Ronald Reagan could have given. It's a speech that George Bush could have given. Uh, it's look, very much an embrace and yeah, an understanding of, um, of the exceptional nature of this great nation, a love of America. Uh, a recognition that America is a special place, a recognition that we all have to work together to ensure that. And you contrast that to ensure that we maintain it. You contrast that with what we hear from Donald Trump again on a daily basis, that America is a failing nation, uh, that America is a laughing stock. Um, uh, the trash talking of the United States of America the truth? very much is part <laughs> of the message that Donald Trump is is pushing. Uh, and so at the end of the day, I think it's important for people to recognize he's not a conservative. There you go. There you go. It's the Democrats that have rebranded. That's why Liz Cheney approves of that speech. This was true to a large extent in 2016. A lot of the pundits said this sounded like a, this was a very Reagan-esque convention right. that Hillary put right. on. The balloons falling from the ceiling was like right. the visual metaphor of that. The Democrats embracing American exceptionalism and, 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 and the Republicans running America into the ground, right? We started seeing that trend reverse in a big way in 2016, and uh, eight years later, it has only accelerated to the point where now the Cheneys are on board, on board and saying it in public. And um, now, to be fair, you know, um, the, the typical libs were a bit shyer about touting his endorsement uh, than normal because Dick Cheney is particularly odious. But, you know, you have Kamala's wins out there bragging about this. You have Dana Bash trying to make this into a thing, even though it's not. But it just does show you how insulated from reality so many of these elites are, that they feel this is a really significant and really indicative of a moral imperative to support Kamala Harris when you have the endorsement of, you know, Easily top five, uh, just most vile and odious political figures of the last 50 years. I mean, easily, easily top five. 
Yeah, but you're talking about people who get hot and bothered when uh, George Bush shares a candy with Michelle. Right. right. You're talking about people for whom Michelle describing George Bush, the war criminal, as her partner in crime does not strike their sense of irony. Right. The, right these, exactly. these are the people that you're talking about. The la I haven't seen polls on it lately. I think they might have realized that, uh, you know, the numbers uh, were not necessarily flattering to Democrats. Uh, the last poll I saw, it was 53 uh, percent approved of George Bush. And, th and that's I, I think that's almost 10 years ago. It's got to be higher now. That was around the time of the Well, not 10 years. It was right around the time of the great candy caper. So right, right, right. five, six years ago. Um so I'm sure that it's higher now. Um, at this point, this is why I keep making this argument. If you are going to stay in the duopoly, if you're really committed to that course, go become a Republican. Go try to change the Republican Party because their base actually has a material need for left policies. The Democrats' base no longer does. You're never going to get them to go in that direction. You don't have any any populist uh, constituency there to to light a fire on. There, there's just you can't make a fire with no wood, right? There, there's nothing. There's no kindling in the Democratic Party to get a meaningful populist movement going. It's it's very much a a party about elite tastes and cultural gestures. Please clap.